G'day guys, Ziggy D here, and today I want to give you guys my initial review of the three new skills, Blight, Blade Flurry, and Scorching Ray. Uh, I've decided just to do this uh, from the heart, without any editing or scripting or planning really. Um, so these, here's just my raw thoughts and feelings on the three skills. Spent a fair bit of time testing them out yesterday on stream, about nine, nine and a half hours or so, uh, and had uh, varying experiences with the three skills, as I'm sure many of you guys have seen who have been trying them out as well. I'm going to start worst to best here, I think. Coming in at number worst, we have Blight. This skill has panned out to be a bit of a disaster, and it was the skill I was most anticipating as well. Uh, it has not turned out at all like I had thought it had turned out. And uh, overall, like, I think it's pretty safe to say that it is overall a pretty rubbish skill. It's pretty bad. If you asked me to give a rating out of 10, it would be something like a 3. I don't think it's exactly elemental hit levels, but it is pretty rough. Now, I have seen, you know, the back and forth on Reddit and such, and, uh, you know, I've seen people with level 21 gems with, you know, boosted to level 26 and top tier gear, uh, you know, thrashing, you know, like, tier 15 calm or whatever with it. And, I mean, that that's, that's that can happen, yes, that can happen, and I've seen that, and I've seen the, the counter things of people using level 14 gems in uh, Merciless Stride Lake and not being able to kill anything. I've seen all of that, but uh, here's, here's the thing, right? I tried to A, level a new character with it, and B, play it at early endgame, and both of the experiences were just horrible. They just felt really bad. So one of the things GGG, well, two of the things GGG said. One was that it would be a supplementary skill for Essence Strain as, like, extra single target damage. I'm going to get into that in a second. And the second thing was that it would uh, help round out the Chaos leveling experience by providing another leveling skill for Chaos uh, before they got to Essence Strain Contagion, before they got that setup going. So I played, uh, I played it for leveling for the first, like, 20 levels or so, and uh, it is really, really rough to level with. Uh, from 1 to 10 before you, before from 1 to 12 before you get Essence Strain, and before you can start doing Essence Strain Contagion. It, uh, it feels like, it feels worse than Lightning Tendrils. It does similar damage to Lightning Tendrils overall. However, you don't have that stunning effect and you also can't crit, so uh, you're locked in place channeling in what is pretty dangerous in the early game like i think it's pretty easy to forget and to not realize especially as an experienced player how how sketchy and difficult the early game is especially for new players this is, if a new player jumps on this and decide that they like the sound of chaos and uh, decide to pick this up as their starting skill they're gonna have a really really rough time for the drawbacks of it having no real defensive properties, and don't tell me that this 80% slow for 0.8 seconds is a defensive property because the range is so short on it that enemies are already in melee range when that slow occurs, and they're already attacking you. And it doesn't slow down their attacks, it just slows down their move speed. Maybe if it was something that actually slowed and interrupted their, move, their attacks as well, then it might be a bit different, but... It's just going to get you killed. I would not recommend this as a leveling skill for anyone, and especially not in hardcore. You're just going to have to level, you know, five times before you reach level 12, unless you're an experienced player, right? It's still going to be horrible experience for new players, and the damage is just not there. Like, it was a really, really, really rough experience, and I just abandoned the character at, like, level 20, because I realized that I was just going to be leveling another Essence Strain Contagion character, because that was just way better, and uh, there was no reason for me to play Blight. And that's kind of my key concern with Blight. Not, like, not so much the damage, they could boost the damage, and if they boosted the damage enough, then it would become a viable or even a good skill, right? Because, you know, eventually you get enough damage where you can just kill stuff quickly enough, then it doesn't matter that it doesn't really have any appealing features to it. But that's the thing, it just doesn't, I feel like it doesn't have a place in the game, it doesn't have any benefits, it doesn't have anything to offer you. And again, that slow is just like a slight, a slight assistance to the massive drawbacks the skill has of being a degen that can't leech, that locks you in place, that has a ramp up time, that you have to invest in car speed to be able to scale, to be better than essence drain. It's just, it's just got too many drawbacks. So that takes me to the other point that GGG made was that this could be a boost of single target damage for Essence Strain Contagion characters. I'm like, okay, another another tool in the tool set for Essence Strain Contagion characters, and yes, it could see some use. However, I don't think that it will, because here's the thing, right? Those builds, Essence Strain Contagion, do not struggle for single target damage. 
Once you've added poison and a wither totem and vile lightning trap, you have tremendous single target damage. And let's not even get into the decay effect from delirium weapons. You can get tremendous single target damage with Essence Strain builds. Not a problem. Essence Strain has been used to kill Shaper easily. Like, it's a solid skill as far as single ta target goes when set up correctly. And here's the other thing about those builds is they do not have sockets for another four link for single target. You've already got your Essence Strain, you've got your Contagion set up, and you've got your Wither Totem set up. Then, once you throw in something like a cast on damage taken, which, especially in hardcore, is pretty much mandatory, you know, anything you want to run like Abyssal Cry or Golems or anything like that, you're not going to have space for another full ink. If you, if you go for a full ink, to, uh, whatever this skill is called, Blight, <laughs> if you go for a full ink Blight as well, then you're going to have no, like, other supporting skills or gems or anything like that. Uh, I don't even know how you're going to have room for things like Curses and Auras and stuff. So it just doesn't have a place in those builds, and it also doesn't seem to have a place as a main skill either yet. So it it might be bugged, some people are suggesting that damage is bugged. Maybe the damage is bugged and it's dealing like less than half the damage it should be. If that's the case, then it might end up getting some play, because if it had its damage doubled from what it is now, then it would see some play, sure. F sure, fair enough, it's a chaos skill, and if it, you know, if it melted bosses and stuff, then that would be fine, but at the moment, it just, my, my underlying concern is not so much the damage, though, because they could boost the damage, and that would, you know, quotation marks, fix it. The problem is that it uh, it just doesn't offer anything. It doesn't it doesn't offer any advantages. It doesn't really have a place. I feel so. Just I just this I'm kind of like shocked how this just didn't pan out uh, at all and just doesn't seem to. I don't understand this skill at all. So uh, blight, uh, unfortunately, very disappointing for me. Let's move on to a slightly more positive topic on scorching ray. Scorching ray suffers from many of the same problems as blight. It is a channel degen skill, and you have the same problems. You're locked in place with a skill that can't leech. You have to rely on other defenses. I was talking to Rory, and he said it's an inherently risky skill. That was the intended design of it. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. That's fine if that's the intention. Um, I suspect the damage might not be there again to reward that risk, but uh, I give I give um, I give. Scorching Ray, a much more positive rating than Blight. Firstly, because it's got range, so you can actually, you know, hit things at the edge of the screen with the default skill, and then you can get quality to boost the beam length even further. And, uh, and you know, at that point, then, you're, you're, yes, you can self-cast, and you can do so by uh, repositioning yourself. You can scale a bit of duration to maintain the debuff effect uh, while you reposition. You know, you can keep it range, and you can, you can play around. You can skilledly play around uh, those disadvantages. Now, the other thing that I, I quite like about Scorching Ray, and the reason why I'm giving it a more positive rating, and if I had to give it a rating out of 10 since I did that for the last skill, I'd give this maybe, I'd, make, I'd give this skill maybe a 6 out of 10 overall. For, you know, for use as a, as a main skill, it's quite viable, quite viable to decent, definitely not top tier. And uh, for use on totems, seems decent too. I've been playing it with a, on a totem character. I'm using a Scorching Road totem, a Searing Bond totem, and then I'm using another totem that's proccing Elemental Equilibrium. This tri-totem setup is fun. It's interesting. feels good. Could be a good new league starter. I'm pretty happy with it overall. It even seems to act pretty well on totems. I was worried that it would the totem's AI would not work very well with this, but it actually seems to work out pretty well, especially if you're supporting with other totems like a Searing Bond totem or a Flame totem or something like that. It, it actually seems to work all right. So... Um, this has panned out to be pretty reasonable. I don't really have any two major issues with this skill. And then the other thing that I like about this is that this is definitely going to see use as a support skill as well. And this is the other thing that pushes Scorching Rain to being definitely a viable skill and a good addition to the game overall. Like, it's, it's cool, it's a laser, but uh, more importantly, uh, it's going to see use as uh, simply putting Scorching Ray on a totem in any fire build. It's going to be like Wither, basically. It's going to be Wither totems for fire builds. You're going to have your Flame Blaster, and you're going to put a Scorching Ray totem down to help with bosses. That's cool, an extra tool in those tool belts for those sorts of builds. So, pretty happy with Scorching Ray overall. Definitely not a top-tier skill, I don't think, but uh, first impressions on it are pretty good. Seems fun to play, it feels, you know... Feels fairly unique compared to other things, even though it's been likened a lot to um, to Incinerate. Uh, it feels quite different to Incinerate, and it does build very different to Incinerate, so I don't have too much of an issue. It probably would have been better if this was like a Lightning skill, I feel, or a Cold skill. I think that would have been a little more interesting, because we do have so much Fire Love, and those other elements are really lagging behind. This could have been some love for those elements, both in terms of the debuffing effect for those elements, and also just to have another skill of those elements. So it's a bit of a shame it ended up being a fire skill, but uh, that, that's where we're at, and it's still a decent skill overall. 
Finally, we come in at Blade Flurry, and if I have to give this a rating right up front, it is a 10 out of 10 skill. It could even well be an 11 out of 10 skill, because this is probably the best melee skill in the game right now. Uh, now, you can, uh, you can certainly make the point that giving this the name melee, or calling this a melee skill, is, uh, is factually incorrect. And I wouldn't argue with that. No, I don't think I would argue with that. With just a little bit of AoE scaling, you can quite easily off screen with this skill. It has more range than some bow skills. <laughs> I mean, it has more range in AoE than something like Rain of Arrows, that's for sure. So yes, factually not a melee skill. That's okay. You can make that argument, that's fine. You can also make the argument that balance wise, this skill is overtuned damage wise. I, I think you, you possibly could be right about that. And then you could also make a, an argument for uh, concerning balancing trends for Path of Exile of making skills that are both insanely good single target and insanely good AOE. And I would also not disagree with that point. This skill is probably one of the best single target melee skills in the game as well, as well as being one of the best AoEs. And this has been a bit of a trend, right? We've had, we have these skills where you absolutely must use a separate single target skill. And that was kind of like, okay, that makes sense. You have an AoE skill and you have a single target skill. Adds a bit of variety, builds, add a, adds a bit of balance to the skills. And then you get these other skills like Blade Flurry that are just very, very good at both, even to the point where they exclude the things that are dedicated to single target or the things that are dedicated to AoE. So yes, you could make the point that balance-wise, there's some concerns there. However, what kind of wiped all of that away is that this skill is just fucking awesome. It is bloody awesome, this skill. It feels so very good to play. And I say this as uh, someone with a little bit of extra insight into the design process of this skill than, than most, because three months ago I went to Grinding Gear Games head offices and tried Blade Flurry uh, back when they decided that they were not able to release it because it wasn't good enough, right? Remember remember that? Um, they decided it wasn't good enough, right? So I played it there and it was rubbish. It was a, I was like, this is going to be another wild strike or something, a skill that, you know, a very small percentage of people are going to play, but it's no one's really going to enjoy it. It's going to be a really, really big disappointment. I was really glad when I, you know, heard the devs mention that they were not going to be releasing and working on it longer. And uh, Blight was at the same time as well. It's a shame that Blight didn't kind of end up the same way here. But uh, Blade Flurry, on the ha other hand, I can definitely see the extra effort and polish and work, and just like going back to going back to the drawing board with this skill. Because the way this skill used to work is, you may notice the Kraton boss has this AOE effect around his character, where he'll occasionally slash uh, enemies near him. You can't really see the full effect of that, but that was kind of what the old Blade Flurry skill looked like. You would run into the middle of a pack, channel, and then you would have slashing attacks on random monsters around you as you as you channeled, right? And uh, it was it just felt so very bad to play. It, it did not feel right at all. It was it was extremely unpleasant. I thought, okay, maybe if you got like enough damage on a crit build here, this could start to feel okay. But at the moment, this is just not. This skill just does not make sense. This skill does not feel good. But then the new blade flurry comes out. And you have this just beautiful, impactful, fast, just smooth, silky, sexy Blade Flurry action here. This skill is absolutely a dream to play. And some of that is definitely due to the fact that it has ridiculous damage, right? Like killing stuff, uh, you know, having a skill that's stronger than another skill, the stronger skill is going to feel better because it's stronger. But I'm talking about like the pure mechanics of this skill feel really good too. The channeling changes you can see in full force in this skill. It's like, so the way this skill works, right, is it's a flame blast essentially. So you, you channel it up to max channels, which is six. I think you can actually get to eight with enchants, which is insane. Um, and then you release it and then there's a burst of damage. Now, however, what makes it even nicer is that while you're channeling, you're also attacking. So while you channel, you're attacking enemies in an area of effect in front of your character. And uh, it's hitting those enemies and dealing an area of effect explosion around those enemies and on top of that enemy. And so while you're channeling, these all these hits are going off in front of you. And then when you release, uh, instantly, like, all of those stored up charges, so all those six charges, uh, are released and, uh, and dealt in, like, a rapid burst of damage. So it means that you can stand there channeling and kind of channeling attacks on enemies, or you can channel up to six 
and then reposition or release the channel and unleash this like big burst of damage. So you get this kind of like channeled feeling, uh, you know, like kind of like chunking enemies down and then you get this big explosion of damage. And that feeling, that kind of like rhythm of gameplay feels fantastic. It's such a nice feeling skill. So I think a really well designed skill and I'm just, it's just incredible. Like it's floored me to see how different it is from what I played previously, how far it's come in three months. And this, this redesign has been, has been something else. So it's absolutely blown me away how, how nice, nicely the skill has turned out. And yeah, it, there's problems around this skill, right? Like there's a lot of problems around this skill and this skill helps expose other problems in the game. Like I mentioned with, you know, just in terms of damage balance, but also in terms of single target versus AOE balance. And it also, you know, it also kind of like further highlights the fact that melee skills where you run up and actually attack an enemy directly um, don't really make much sense uh, compared to skills like this. But none of this is Blade Flurry's fault. <laughs> None of this is Blade Flurry's fault. Blade Flurry is a fantastic skill. It doesn't matter whether you want to call it a melee skill or say it's not technically melee. Uh, it doesn't matter because this skill feels fantastic to play and it is a really well designed skill. And it's uh, like I, I always praise uh, Blizzard uh, for their skill design in Diablo 3. A lot of their skills just feel fantastic to play. They make really, uh, they made a really polished game with really nice feeling skills. And I actually think Blade Flurry blows away a lot of the skill design in Diablo 3 because it kind of looks like um oh I can't even remember the name of it torrential something or other uh where you you torrent these arcane missiles towards the enemies it looks very similar to Blade Flurry but that skill is just extremely flaccid feeling compared to Blade Flurry this is like that skill was was given a massive dose of Viagra <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, let's uh, let's end this analogy just here. But uh, yes, I think I've rambled for long enough. Blade Flurry is a fantastic feeling skill, regardless of any balance concerns that it might it might bring up. And even if it needs to receive receive a bit of a nerf, but that may well be the case. Uh, it is just a, such a nicely designed skill that is such a pleasure and a treat to play. And I highly recommend you guys give it a go. I chucked it on my Viper Strike character, uh, who was previously Name Lock Melee Viper Strike. And uh, just like the the feeling of that on this character is, I don't know how I'd played Viper Strike for so long, <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, my ramblings and my thoughts here on the new skills. Uh, a bit of a mixed bag, a bit of a mixed bag. I hope that Blight sees some love. Scorching Ray is, I think, in a decent spot, and uh, we might see a little bit of Nerf Bat tap on the face for uh, Blade Flurry, sure. But I think this is a really really nice skill. Alrighty guys, that is going to be it for now. I am Ziggy D, and thank you very much for watching. See ya! I believe Pretty good, guys. Pretty bloody good. That's very, that's very smooth and easy.